Hi, my name is Janique Carbone, and I'm the co-author of the Microsoft Virtual Server 2005 R2 Resource Kit and of the upcoming Microsoft Windows Server 2008 Hyper-V Resource Kit. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a snapshot using the Hyper-V Manager. I'm going to show you the snapshot file structure on disk and how to use the Hyper-V Revert feature to return a virtual machine to a previous state and configuration captured in a set of snapshot files. The snapshot, snapshot feature is new in Hyper-V and it allows you to very easily capture one or more point in time configurations of a virtual machine. This could come in handy, for example, if you wanted to load and test multiple applications on a virtual machine. You could load one application at a time test it, and take a snapshot of the virtual machine before proceeding to load the next application. In this manner, if you found at any point in the next application's installation that it became corrupted or for some reason uh, it didn't perform as expected during testing, then you could use the Hyper-V Revert feature in order to quickly reload the previous snapshot and return your virtual machine to a known and working configuration. So looking at the screen, this is the Hyper-V Manager. It's an MMC console that's installed when the Hyper-V role is added to Windows Server 2008. On this particular Hyper-V installation, I have two virtual machines running. In this video, I'm going to use the Win 2008 base in order to create uh, snapshots. And it's really just a default installation of the operating system. But before I create a snapshot of Win2000 base VM, let's go take a quick look at the directory structure where the virtual machine files are stored. In this case, I've changed the default Hyper-V directory and created Hyper-V VMs to store virtual machine files. In Hyper-V VMs, Hyper-V created two subdirectories, the snapshots directory and the virtual machines directory. At this point, the snapshots directory is empty since no snapshots have been created. We'll come back and look at this later after we've actually taken a snapshot. It'll be more interesting. In the virtual machines directory, there are a few folder file pairs. Since I have two virtual machines running on this particular installation of Hyper-V, there is a file folder pair for each of these virtual machines. The ones that I have highlighted correspond to the Win2008 base virtual machine. So there's basically a .xml file that's named with, the, uh, with a GUID in order to keep the files associated with a particular virtual uh, machine unique. And inside the uh, XML file is the configuration and settings of my Win2008 base virtual machine. So for example, if we quickly looked at it, we could see that it contains uh, information such as the MAC address of the virtual machine. And also, it contains the name of the uh, virtual hard disks that are associated with the particular um, virtual machine. In this case, it's called 2000, Win2008 Base VHD. The folder that Hyper-V created contains two files, a file with a .bin extension and a file with a .vsv extension. The bin file basically contains the memory contents of the uh, virtual machine. So if a virtual machine is placed in a saved state, the memory page contents will be dumped into the bin file. And in the VSV file, there is other supporting information, such as the processor regi register state, which is needed when a virtual machine is restored in order to uh, bring it back to the point in time and to the configuration state at the point in time when the snapshot was taken. In the Hyper-V VHDs directory, you can see that basically it is the host for all the virtual hard disks associated with the virtual machines running on the system. So going back to the Hyper-V Manager, let's create a snapshot. And it's very easily done. You can just basically right click on the virtual machine and choose Snapshot. 
you can see that the operation is taking place and the snapshot is being captured. When the snapshot capture is completed, within the snapshots portion of the Hyper-V Manager display, you can see that it's created a directory structure that contains the snapshot I've just created, which is the original uh, state of the virtual machine. And there's a child object in that tree structure. It represents the currently running virtual machine. So now let's go back and take a look at the file structure that has been created on the disk. In the Hyper-V VHDs, nothing has changed. There's still the Win 2008 base VHD file. However, things are more interesting in the Hyper-V VMs directory now. Under Snapshots, Hyper-V has created two directories. One directory is named using the same GUID as the original virtual machine. In this directory, a new differencing disk with a .avhd extension was created. Any changes made to the running virtual machine are now saved in this file. Originally, any, any change in the virtual machine before we took the snapshot was saved in the win 2008 basevhd file that um, is stored in the Hyper-V VHD directory that we saw earlier. The second directory that was created by Hyper-V contains two files that, again, use the same GUID name uh, of the original virtual machine. So it, this directory is basically the location of the memory save state files for uh, the snapshot. When a virtual machine state, again, is, is changed to the save state, the memory page content is written into the file with the .bin extension, and the file with the VSV extension contains that additional supporting information that's needed to restore a virtual machine to the same state it was in before it was saved. Also created during the uh, snapshot is a copy of the original XML file of the virtual machine. And you can see, when I open it, that it's still pointing to the original VHD file. Now, in reality, if we go back and look at the original the original XML file, we can see that the pointer to the VHD has now been changed to the differencing disk that was created during the snapshot. So now, if I decided that I really wanted to go back to the state of the VM as saved in the snapshot, I can use the revert option. And so I'll go back and right-click on the virtual machine and choose Revert. And I'll get this pop-up that asks me if I'm sure that I want to revert to the virtual machines. I'll go ahead and say yes. And at that point, although the uh, pointer in the snapshots doesn't really show a change, the information that was, that was saved in the snapshot files has been reloaded, and the virtual machine is now back to the, its original state. And you could see it happen in just a few seconds. So I hope this video was helpful to uh, understand how to create a snapshot in Hyper-V, how to identify and find the files created during a snapshot, and how to use the revert option to reload the state captured in the snapshot. In an upcoming video, I'll explain how to apply and delete snapshots. Until then, keep virtualizing.